Hello, and welcome to my final live annotated bibliography presented with Powtoon. This one is based on the article Cyberbullying, Conflict Management, or Just Messing. Teenage Girls' Understandings and Experiences of Gender, Friendship, and Conflict on Facebook in an Irish Second Level School. It reports on a quantitative and qualitative study in which the researchers started out investigating cyberbullying, but adjusted the study as they became interested in the experiences the girls were relaying about the role of Facebook in their friendships and conflict management within those friendships. The quantitative data was collected from 116 questionnaires completed during class by 14 and 17 year olds in an all-girls Catholic school in Ireland. 26 of those girls also volunteered to do an individual in-depth interview and six teaching staff including the guidance counselor and principal participated in a focus group. Content analysis of all three events identified three key themes. Conflicting discourse around friendship. At first, the girls and teachers all raved about how well everyone got along at the school. It wasn't until later, in answering the interview questions, that the girls started to share many negative experiences that they had had with friendship at school and on social media. The second key theme was direct and indirect aggression on social media. A common belief is that girls are attracted to social media because it allows for indirect aggression a form of aggression that they supposedly prefer. But the researchers found that the experiences reported were of direct aggression in that they were public and the identities were known. The third theme was the tendency to downplay cyberbullying. The girls could identify forms of offline bullying, but while they were sharing experiences of online hostility, they could not identify the experiences as cyberbullying. One moderator for these findings is gender. The research in the lit sorry, the research in the literature review provided in the article suggests that girls have more intimate friendships between fewer friends and are socially expected to fight more indirectly than boys. Another could be the school expectations about aggression. The teachers confirmed the strict expectations of the school for amicability. If the girls were conforming to the socialization of their school that had a low tolerance for female aggression, they would want to believe in its positivity, and they may overlook or downplay negative incidents. These expectations were also the reason that online disputes stemmed from fights that started in the school environment and where the expectations prevented the girls from working things out in a direct manner offline. A mediator explaining the downplay of the experiences that include um, could include the girls' personal perceptions of friendship and online aggression. They could see the types of online aggression they experienced as normal in friendship. Another mediator that explains why girls might take to social media to fight is the level of ambiguity it provides. Some social media sites with high levels of ambiguity allow for passive aggression, so um, they can easily get off the hook and avoid actually ending a friendship with their comments or actions. Levels of ambiguity may also be a mediator in explaining why the girls had a hard time identifying cyberbullying. The higher the levels of ambiguity, the more passive-aggressive the comments or actions, and the harder it is to prove intent, which may make them question the severity of the incident. The researchers concluded that Facebook offers a site of support and relief of frustrations, but that it can also be a site of anxiety and hurtful behaviors, and that future research is needed to better understand gender and media or cultural studies, and how they can be applied to understanding and addressing conflict in the context in which young people communicate. The article is from reputable sources and included an extensive literature review at the beginning, but I thought it was weird that they didn't share any of their data in the article, only the findings. It made, it, made it difficult to report using raw data for this assignment. The limitations of the study uh, included small size, the fact that the population was predominantly white Catholic females, so it's hard to generalize the findings to wider populations, and the amount of qualitative data, which was mostly self-reported, leading to bias, and as the researchers noted, a difficulty in accessing aggressors. The study is, however, very useful in mental health studies because the first-hand experiences that were shared provide insight into the gendered and cultural context in which the cyberbullying occurs. There were a number of moderators, including gender, age, and social development, just to name a few, that relate to my previous articles, and the included literature review will be invaluable to my final assignment. Thank you. Created using Powtoon.